Hey guys, I'm Justin and welcome to the first devlog for my upcoming game, Cosmic Castaways. I've been working on Cosmic Castaways on and off for the past few months, and only recently decided to make more time for it. Now what is Cosmic Castaways? At its core, it's a third person, sci-fi colony sim with survival elements. The main inspirations for the game were RimWorld, State of Decay, and Maze Runner. Yes, the movie Maze Runner. Let me explain. The player, along with NPC colonists, are abducted by aliens and left stranded in an intricate alien-made ecosystem as a form of experiment. With the player as their leader, the group strives to survive this strange land by gathering resources, building structures, crafting tools, and finding off threats. The colonists, however, have their own personalities, needs, and talents. Managing the relationships and morale inside the colony will be a core part of the game. Every so often, the aliens drop off newly abducted people into the land, and it's up to the player how to handle that. The AIs acting as colonists play a huge part in this game. If I couldn't get that right, then the game really wouldn't make much sense. Usually when making games, I'd first prototype the player mechanics, such as movement and combat. However, for this one, I had to prioritize the AI, and it helped that I had a solid background on game AI. The Sims and Rimworld characters acted in ways where they had their own needs and goals, so I wanted my colonists to behave in some similar way. In order to achieve this, I used an approach called GOPE. GOPE, or Goal-Oriented Action Planning, is a way to make NPCs act logically. Instead of telling the characters exactly what to do at every given moment, you set up their goals and let them figure out the best steps to achieve those goals. Imagine your colonist wants to eat. With GOPE, the game understands that the goal is to eat and the colonists will consider what it needs to do to make that happen. So it will plan actions like searching for food, picking it up, finding a place to eat, and then finally eating it. If for some reason the goal is unachievable, for example there's no food, then it looks for another goal. Now in order to fast track development, I used my own AI tool as a base. It doesn't support GOPE out of the box, but at least it already has a lot of features that I needed, such as roaming, moving to points of interest, and combat. I used gameplay tags to define the states and goals, such as eating, sleeping, and working. I then created a table of actions and filled it up with things such as chopping wood, mining rocks, sleeping on a bed, etc. Each action fulfills a state by either adding or removing a gameplay tag. They also have scores, so for example, sleeping on a bed is preferable to sleeping on the ground. If you go back to the eating example, one of the AIs will eat while standing because there's only one chair. I also needed a way to tell the AI which tasks to prioritize. So I made a work UI similar to that of RimWorld, where 1 means highest and 5 is lowest. Tasks with higher priority are completed before those with lower priority. The result is this. Some of them are chopping wood, mining rocks. They also know that they need to carry in an item and bring it back to the stockpile which is this big grey platform right here. They can also hunt animals when assigned. Eating and sleeping should be associated with some stats, so I added the need to eat and sleep using some float variables that decrease every second. If this need reached a certain amount, the AI would label itself as hungry or tired, prompting the GOP system to fulfill those needs. I added some progress bars to visualize what the needs decreasing looked like. Blue one is sleep and yellow is hunger. Since there were only few beds available, some of them collapsed to the ground. If there were enough beds, they'd prefer to sleep on them. If there were enough beds. I'm mainly a programmer and while I do have some artistic skills, they're not enough to call myself an animator or a 3D artist. So I wanted an art style that was simple enough for me to do. Something that didn't require intense sculpting or texturing, but also didn't look like half-baked programmer art. While browsing for some references, I saw this unlit character pack on the marketplace. I like how it looked and it definitely seemed something that I could do. It had its flat shading style meaning I could use palettes and vertex modeling to color my meshes. This eliminates the need for proper UV mapping and texturing. Poly count is relatively low which would help improve performance. And it meant that even if I modeled ugly looking hair like this, it would still look pretty decent in game. Having planes for the eyes and mouth also meant that I could make faces like this. I set up a test level using some assets I found online 
in order to create a mock-up of how the game world will look. I optimized some materials like the grass and tree shaders to boost the FPS, changed some color of the plants to give an alien vibe, then added the giant moon in the sky in case there was still doubt that we were on an alien planet. I placed the player in the map and it looked pretty good, but there was something a bit off. The player didn't really blend well with the environment. It looks as if their character was too flat because the environment's lighting and shadows weren't affecting it. I could make the environment shaders flat as well, but I didn't really want to do that. So I went and changed the materials from unlit to default lit, plugged in the texture to base color, but kept a portion of the flat shading by multiplying it by 0.65. Now the character is affected by lighting and shadows, but still has that predominantly flat shaded look. That's it for this episode. Next time we're going to work on the relationship system and some animations, because right now the colonists are just punching trees and rocks till they disappear, and they're losing their torsos for some reason, which is not good. Thanks for watching.